Subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Garrett and Matt here again. Matt and Garrett here again. I am excited, Matt, to be sharing this morning with you. We um, you know, we came across this topic. Matt brought this topic up about the difference between you know an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, an employee. And looking at this as we see a lot of people build their own businesses and they build their real estate careers out and kind of how they look at their business, how they look at themselves. And Matt, this came up for you where you're like, you know what, I think it's good to kind of understand what these different kind of roles are and who we are around these and ownership you should take of yourself and your business and how you're approaching it in these different ways, which I thought was really fascinating. I was like, I'm in, let's talk about it. Let's do this. So uh, Matt, Thank you for bringing this topic and good morning. Good morning. I think this will be a fun one. Maybe push some buttons a little bit, I think, because the entrepreneurship culture, so to speak, for the past several years has become like the cool thing. Oh, I got to be an entrepreneur. And I kind of look at it and say, well, why? Right? What's wrong with being a solopreneur or a really good salesperson or a really great employee, depending on what that means? And so it's like, and it hit me when I was listening to an interview with Gino Wickman, who wrote Traction, EOS, Rocket Fuel, those kinds of books. And I was like, you know, we should probably create or talk about this a little bit so that as a salesperson, as a real estate agent, you can really focus on what your business is and what it's producing and what that means in terms of your involvement. So to kind of kick it off, Garrett, just comparing entrepreneur to solopreneur, purely the way I think about an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is somebody who starts and runs a business in which there are also other people working in that business. Whereas a solopreneur is someone who is running a quote unquote business, but they're the only person, right? So a real estate agent could technically fall into the solopreneur world. And that kind of really depends on how that independent contract relationship is built with their brokerage as well. Because would you consider a pharmaceutical salesperson a solopreneur, you know, who works on maybe a small base and commission, you know, as a salesperson or any other type of salesperson, car salesperson, right? Are they a solopreneur? And I think that can be left up to debate. But I think for the most part, I would classify real estate agents in the solopreneur category, except for those who have now gone out and started their own brokerages because now you are registering and filing a business with the state, your commission and all that stuff. And you actually have the structure now to hire people and build and run a different kind of expanded business, which I think in that case would then say, okay, now we're in the entrepreneurship world. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. And I'm not, I'm not trying to hate on people who are like, well, but I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm building like, it has nothing to do with how much you earn or anything like that. It's just, structure to me. Uh, yeah, well, I think the name just gets kind of overplayed. And you see, you hear people saying like, well, I'm an entrepreneur and whatnot. And it's like, well, like, what does that really classify as? Like, what, what are you saying that you are? And I, and I go back, you said people working underneath you. And I, I look at somebody who creates anything from scratch from the ground up, you know, and they accept all risk and liability around what they're creating. Like at the end of the day, when it fails, it's all on them. If it doesn't work out, and you know, you talked about other employees being there. If it doesn't work out, it not only affects me, it affects all the people that I've organized down below me. If my vision here doesn't work out. And I think that if you really want to classify what an entrepreneur is, it's somebody that has that creative idea to create something new from scratch, from the ground up, and implement it, make it come to life and make it thrive and grow. Solopreneurship is an interesting one because I, I actually really have never taken much time to like overthink or even talk about what is a solopreneur. And so I think it's an interesting concept to look at like, okay, so where do you fall into that? And I think it is that individual, maybe they don't have a whole lot of people underneath them and moving through that type of business building. But at the end of the day, it is all on them for themselves. They technically while they're holding their license underneath, we're talking about real estate agents or mortgage brokers. They're holding their license underneath technically an entrepreneur, but there is risk on themselves because as an independent contractor, they are running on their own. They are the ones that if at the end of the day, if this doesn't work, it's really no downside to the actual main brokerage. They're just like, oh, you're not participating with this anymore. Well, the concept of the business doesn't go anywhere, right? Like if you start a restaurant and the restaurant fails, like that restaurant is gone. It no longer exists. 
if you start your own individual real estate business as an agent underneath a brokerage, if you don't do well, like the brokerage is still there. People can still go get serviced and still find somebody to list and sell their home. That doesn't go away, right? And maybe this also brings up, uh, and so maybe the, the real difference here we should look at is entrepreneur versus solopreneur versus intrapreneur, right? Somebody who is working inside an entrepreneurship because you could maybe look at some agents as intrapreneurs as well. Hey, I'm working inside a system. What I create for myself is based off of how much I put in, but I'm working inside, you know, somebody else's system. Well, that's an interesting way to look at this also because again at the at the end of the day as you just said, you can be all in in something and be very excited about something, but at the end of the day you're building something for somebody else. That would be I guess the intra- entrepreneur side. But you're also building in job security for yourself because the best that you can operate and help the bigger picture grow creates longevity for you as an employee to be able to have that job for a very long time, which I think is a great ownership to take in any job that you're in. So just looking at this, oh, I got a job. If you can find, and this goes back to entrepreneurs, if you can find people internally that want to support you in that way, you all of a sudden have a, a thriving business model is what you have when you have employees that want to see it succeed just as much as you do. You brought him this, was it intrapreneur? Intrapreneur, yeah. Intrapreneur, okay. Never heard that one before, Matt. And maybe I'm just behind the times. I mean, these were probably all words that have been made up over the last decade, quite frankly. I mean, aside from entrepreneur, that one has been around. So the way I look at this, and I'm sure there's definitions floating around the internet, and I know this is a bit of recap, but an entrepreneur, right? Someone who starts and runs a business that is scalable, that... I also see could be sold off, right? It's it's not reliant. It's not reliant on the person who started it for its longevity. A solopreneur is someone who starts a business on their own real estate practice that is completely reliant on that person because if that person's not running it, there's no business. An entrepreneur then is somebody who operates within a business but has the creativity to also help that business grow and also help their own position grow. So it could be a manager, it could be an employee. There's a lot of different ways that you could, I guess, define what an entrepreneur is. You did a great way of summarizing that, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Merriam-Webster, just give me a call and I can help you with plenty of definitions. The listeners have just said, Matt, thank you so much for just simplifying it down to that because I think that that's what I needed also. <laughs> so entrepreneur versus solopreneur, this also makes me think about Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrants. And I think this is very important for real estate agents to think about because as an agent, you might start a team and things and be like, oh, I'm moving into entrepreneur status. And, and maybe, maybe you are. However, the question I always have is like, are you building something that could be saleable? Which, by the way, this has nothing to do with your income. You can build incredible wealth by not ever building a business, right? You can just make a really, really kick ass salary and invest really, really well and become incredibly wealthy. You don't need to own a business to become wealthy, but the cash flow quadrant state, we got a income side that is relying on you, which is the left side of the square. So the top quadrant is employee where you have a set salary, you work for somebody else, right? That's what you make, period, end of story. You have the self-employed, which is the solopreneur space where you have limitless income potential, but you also have to go do it. There's no guarantee that you're going to get paid. So then on the right side, which are income streams that can earn money without much of your involvement or as much as, let's say, employee or self-employed. So you have business owner, which doesn't necessarily just mean entrepreneur. You can own a business without having been the one that started and operated it and all that stuff. But entrepreneur would definitely fit here where you could walk away for a little bit and the business will continue to operate and continue to make more money without much of your involvement. Business owner category, great category to be in. And then there's the investor category, which is what uh, we should all be striving for, in my opinion, where you're sending your dollars out to do the work for you. Your little dollars go out the door and they come back and bring more of their friends later on. Your little dollars. So <laughs> I'm just enjoying listening to you today, Matt. I'm just going to let you just continue to talk. Thoroughly enjoying this. You got a great podcast going on here. <laughs> What I was wrote down when you were talking about this was, well, let's talk about the end game then for a second. Because we do see realtors that sell their business and they have a, a method of doing that. It's less than I would like to see. They build this incredible business. They you know, run it over time. For the most part, a lot of the most successful realtors that I know in their life 
do not focus on the end game of, I can't wait to sell my business. They focus on the right now game of, I'm creating great wealth. I'm going to limit, this is why I love the cash flow quadrants and bringing Robert Kiyosaki into this, is living on less than what you're earning and heavily investing during the time that you're a peak earner instead of raising your bar to basically absorb all the income that you're making. Those are the people that are the most wealthy that I've watched coming out of a solopreneur real estate business because they're never looking at it as like, oh, I can't wait to sell this off at some point in time or having to rely on that. They've built a game around, no, 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 I'm, I'm a heavy earner, a heavy creator of, of income right now. And let's take all my little dollars and send them out there and help them bring all their friends back. That's a really solid plan that every realtor or every solopreneur should be looking at with the end game of, of a question mark of, am I going to have a sellable thing at the end of this? Yeah. And I think most, well, I shouldn't say most people, because um, most people probably live in one of the quadrants when we look at the society as a whole. But a lot of the successful people that we see, whether they're in real estate or anywhere else, live on both sides of this square. So they'll be a solopreneur like a real estate agent, and maybe they also own a business or they have big investments or they're an employee and have investments or also own a business. You could even be, if you're an entrepreneur, you're probably definitely in, in both the solopreneur and business owner category because you're making money. Maybe you pay yourself a salary from your, your business, but you also are, own this business where you get residual income from as well. So it's not like you have to live in one of these places, but I do think when it, when it comes to real estate, because we talk a lot about Garrett, are you running your business like a business? And there is a difference between running your business like a business and being an entrepreneur. When we're talking about running your business, we're talking about having structure, having systems in place that make it easy to run. That doesn't necessarily make you an entrepreneur if you are the business, because you're the business, right? You're not the, I mean, and you are also the owner, but you, you know, it's a it's a feedback loop that's never ending. I can't wait to go back and listen to this recording. <laughs> Probably lost like half the people that are like, Matt's just rambling. I think this goes back to understanding where you stand in your business, understanding what it is you're creating. If you're gonna bother to be a business owner, take a step back and look at like what is this stuff? If you're gonna call yourself and put a title on yourself, understand what it is that you're saying that you truly are. And I think the biggest thing is and going back to Matt, are you running your business like a business is, are you truly taking ownership of that in that way? And I think that's, you know, coming off the last podcast that we just did, it's like, take ownership of where you stand here. And I think if you realize what title is that you're giving yourself, ask yourself, am I owning that? I know a lot of people that call themselves business owners and they just don't really ever show up and they wonder why they're not that successful. Well, I'm a business owner. I got this, I got that. But you wonder why your business is floundering. It's like, well, you're not truly showing up as a solopreneur, entrepreneur, business owner, whatever you want to call yourself. A lot of you, a lot of people show up as like a, an employee and they wonder why they don't have a boss that's beating them up to be better and to strive to be better and to grow. And it's because... That ain't going to happen. That doesn't happen for entrepreneurs. You don't have somebody over you cracking a whip going, come on, man, like, let's pick up the pace. Let's get this thing going. We got goals we want to hit. You're the person. And not only are you the person, if you're growing a bigger team, a bigger organization, you're not only that for yourself, you're that for all these other people down below you. And you just need to know your role of what you're building and where you're going to. It's not just adding more people. It's not just adding more product. You need to know your role. That's what I would say about. And ultimately, like personally, I don't really care what the titles are that we call ourselves. And Gary, you said to me too, I think when we were putting together lists of uh, topics and this one came up is that, you know, for the most part, you know, an entrepreneur title shouldn't be self-given anyway. I did say that. Yeah, he did say this. He said, you know, you're an entrepreneur when somebody else calls you that based on your actions. And I think that's a nice way to look at it. And in some ways, relieves the pressure, right? Because if we put the pressure on, oh my goodness, I'm an entrepreneur. I have to do all this stuff. You know, it's like, relieve the pressure off of yourself and look at just how the income's coming in and set up structures that help you run entrepreneurship, your solopreneurship, whatever you want to call it, in a way that is comfortable. And then that'll lead ultimately probably to entrepreneurship anyway. I love self-given titles like that. When someone's like, I am, 
I am this. I'm always like, hmm. I don't know if you are. Instagram and Facebook have that, right? And I struggled with this because like they kept like pinning little categories underneath your name on your profile. Like for a while, I got to go look at what mine says now, but for a while it said entrepreneur. Wait, why does it say entrepreneur? I'm not really an entrepreneur. I mean, yes, I'm an independent contractor, you know, running some things. And I would say now maybe I am running a couple of businesses, but I'm like, wait, I, I don't think I deserve that title. Why does it keep saying that? Because there was no other selection for like business or real estate agent or coach wasn't there. And was like, I just want something different there. But there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm going to put that in my title because it makes me look cool. And I guess part of the reason why I wanted to talk about this too, Garrett, is that people understand what's behind that. They will validate you based on your actions, not your title. And most entrepreneurs, I mean, quite frankly, don't make a lot of money anyway. I had a gentleman recently that referred to himself as, as a... Uh a Renaissance man. And, and this is one of those things that I was like, I don't think you can give yourself that title. That's something for somebody else to give you. Like they can tell you that, like that he's kind of a Renaissance man. Like the guy like is kind of a, you know, got all these great things going on. It's kind of who he is. Like imagine like meeting him and being like, so what do you do? Oh, I'm a Renaissance man. Oh, me too. Tell me more. I like to do a lot of things as well. I think that that's where I came up. I, I shared with you, Matt, like I don't think entrepreneur is a title that you get to give yourself. I think that it's something that you are earned by other people around you. And, and really, does a title that really ever need to be said? It's something that you just act as you are that. Like, that's just who you are. I think it's funny when people have the title of I'm an entrepreneur, they're an entrepreneur. I don't know. Well, I mean, if somebody has given it to you at some point, right, then I would say, okay, fair enough. Like, you've started invested in, transformed, and sold enough businesses where, okay, I think that's fair. But even once it's given to you, like you don't get to go like, okay, now I get to put it on my business card or now I get, it's just, you just own it. Like a true entrepreneur just owns it and runs with it internally and is like, well, that, I guess I do create stuff and I guess I do build things. Like whatever happened to just being a businessman or a woman or person? Whatever happened just to being you? Like I'm a businessman. Oh, cool. What do you do? Business. What kind of businessman? Business. I love how you plan that, buddy. I want to know. Am I speaking with an entrepreneur here right now? Or It's fun going around on this because I think anybody listening to this, hopefully you're having a good time, as fun as we are, because you can really, at the end of the day, put whatever definition you want on this stuff. And, and you can call yourself whatever you want because ultimately people are going to judge you on how you show up and what your actions are. That's the thing. How are you showing up? That's what I think what this all came down to. And I was like, I'm fascinated to have this conversation with you, Matt. I think at the end of the day, what my hope is, is people say, okay, this idea of being a real estate broker, a, you know, a business owner, a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, it's like, figure out yourself how you want to show up and then ask yourself, am I showing up in that capacity? And I find a lot of people, they own a title, but they don't show up as that title. They don't show up as that, that business owner of, are you running your business like a business? That simple question just right there. They just don't show up in that way, but they call themselves a business owner. And it's like, yeah, you're operating something. It's something's happening here. But I think that that's at the end of the day is, is again, you know, it's, just, it's good to just kind of self-check yourself around this type of stuff. And if you want to truly in your heart be an entrepreneur, take a step back and look at what you're creating and ask yourself, am I really showing up that way? Look at the definition and be like, is that who I really am? And if you're not and you want to be that person, step into the role. It's needed. We need entrepreneurs. We do. We need people to start businesses and create opportunities and, and jobs and and I think this is where I'm really hopeful this relieves some of the pressure on real estate agents. And I hope it also allows a lot of real estate agents to not judge others because a real estate agent can be all those different things. And they can be really, really good at helping guide people in listing and buying homes and selling homes. Being a solopreneur, solo agent, being an entrepreneur, team lead, a broker owner, or being somebody with inside a team. I feel like there's a pressure in the industry where everybody's got to be this entrepreneur and you don't, you don't have to be, you can just be a darn good real estate agent. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's probably where a lot of people are most happy. 
Well, and again, I go back to some of the most wealthy real estate agents I know are not trying to be entrepreneurs, business owners, whatever it is. What they realize is they're like, look, I like helping people buy and sell homes. I'm going to do a really damn good job at it to the point that people are going to want to come back and use my service over and over and over again. And their long-term end game is not to sell this company off when it's done. Their long-term end game right now is how much real estate or investments can I build while I'm going through this time? And some of them are stupid wealthy. Like, I mean, crazy amounts of wealth. That I'm like, oh my gosh. They're not looking at like, okay, my wealth will come when I sell this thing at the end. And I think that whatever you're doing, be there 100%, own that job title, find something you're passionate about. You can be an amazing employee and be passionate about whatever it is that you're working underneath and helping grow. Show up in that way. I think, again, that the reason this whole conversation started is people kind of not showing up at the title that they are calling themselves, not taking ownership of it. And there's just great opportunity for everybody to show up at 100%. Yeah. Well, now that we've um, cleared that up. I don't know if it's clear. That's, yeah, it's clear as mud. We would like to know what everybody thinks of Matt's topic here. Yeah, give me some feedback. Hit me with the honest, the honesty. I want to hear it. Now that they have a new clarity about entrepreneur, solopreneur, entrepreneur, employee, W2, W9, 1099. W9 and 1099 kind of go in hand, right? 1057, 938. K2s. W7s. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are like, man, I'm kind of upset at Matt. Like he said, he said I'm not an entrepreneur and I am an entrepreneur. Hey, man, whatever. I'm up for it all. And I'm happy to be called out too. If you see something like, well, Matt says he's this and it doesn't appear that way, call me out, right? I mean, that's, we did the episode on calling out. I think sometimes we need that. Here's my thing. I'm very excited if anybody's like, Matt said that, but I am an entrepreneur. It's fine. I'd love it if you're an entrepreneur. Just act like an entrepreneur. Yeah. The people around you will be the judge. Not Garrett nor I will be the judge. The people around you, your clients, your business partners, they will be the judge. So I probably have more to say on this, but I'll, I'll leave it there. We know you have more to say on this, Matt. I think I'm good. Of course I have more to say. I always have more to say on everything. That's why we started a podcast. I can't stop talking. <laughs> oh, man. Well, if you do want to give us some feedback on this and explore this conversation, which I think would be an explosion of comments in terms of difference of opinions on this stuff, healthy difference of opinions, join our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash The Ninja Selling Podcast, where you can voice your opinions and share your thoughts on our podcast. Whatever you say will not hurt our feelings. We will take that feedback as real and we appreciate it. We do ask you are kind and courteous to each other inside the group, which actually you all are. We haven't had to break up any fights, Garrett. We have a whole bunch of ninjas is what we have. Ninjas are really like 99 out of 100 times. They're just nice people. It's what gravitates people to like what this is. So uh, yeah, no, I really have not had to. There was one moment the other day that I was like, "Uh uh-oh, we may need to like oversee this conversation. There was some smoke and we're like, is there going to be fire? And there was no fire. It was starting and it kind of like went away. And I was like, that's about as dangerous as that one is going to get. So we're good. Yeah. So I appreciate everybody in, in the group playing nice in the sandbox with each other, even when y'all disagree on things. I think it's great. I've, I've seen some disagreements in there and that they're like the most healthy disagreements you could possibly have. So keep that up. If you want to learn more about what's coming up in terms of open installations, a lot of people have been asking in the group and I've gotten messages. Garrett's probably received messages about, hey, when's there going to be public installations here, there, wherever? They're always available to look at on the ninjaselling.com website. You can go there, click on the calendar and search through all the public installations that are available. And you can search the private ones. If your company might be hosting one, that's probably where you register. But if you, your company's not hosting one, the public ones is where you're looking for. For that, if you're interested in learning more about coaching, you can click on the coaching button that's somewhere on that page or go to ninjacoaching.com. And we also have the bulletin board in the Facebook group. I know there's a lot of announcements. We try to keep that updated with upcoming mastery, installations, all that stuff. So there's several places you can go to find this stuff. If you don't see it somewhere, it probably doesn't exist yet. So did I miss anything, Garrett? That's a great way to wrap that. If you can't find it, it probably doesn't exist. Yeah. I think it's a great, it's a great close to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for the topic, the creative ideas today, and I hope everybody enjoyed it. Thanks, Garrett. And uh, I'm excited to be uh, a newly titled multipreneur. So 
I can't wait to do the cards. Have a great one, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the Ninja Selling Podcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.